Thank you for coming on the call and I'm sorry that it was a little bit confusing. I just wanted to share you're one of my best friends in Watson Caring Science and you've worked with Dr. Jean Watson for many years. And I understand that you are president elect of the International Association of Human Caring. That is really exciting. And also I wanted to share that with, the, with the, um, our listeners is that you have been involved in caring science from the time you were a bedside nurse, working in the hospice, working in home care, and now as an educator. And one of the great gifts that you have, not only is your wisdom that we're gonna listen to now and your vision of nursing in this new age, um, but also I wanted to share about your free online gift that's gonna be a link at the end of your talk. And I'm so excited that you're with me and I'm happy to see you. Where are you right now? Is everything doing okay? Yeah, we're, we're good. We're in North Carolina. It's a little bit chilly today, um, but we're doing okay. Just all of us are on stay at home orders. And so we're right. all staying at home and working together and yeah. Well, that's good. great. Well, I'm going to just start with a little get centering. I want everyone to take a moment just to quiet themselves, giving yourself permission to be 100% here and all in, as we are so graciously in the presence of one of the giants in nursing. Thank you, Kathleen. Welcome. So I'm happy that you're here. So we, I wanted to ask you, this is a um, very important project that I'm doing called Conscious Visionary Nurses on the Edge of Evolution. And my vision is to reach out as many people as possible so we can inspire nurses to sort of th think about what the next steps are and what we need to manifest in the future coming out of this time where there's so much change and disruption. So I'm really honored to listen to your wisdom and what some of your ideas are as we move into the future. Well, um, I have been, the work that I've been doing, the research work and the teaching work that I've been doing uh, for the last mm, about 15 years, 15, 20 years, has uh, all been directed towards the future. It's all been um, trying to envision the possibilities that we can all engage in, in um, technologies that are uh, quickly becoming a, a very large fixture in all of our personal and professional lives. Right. Uh, when um, the internet became important and when uh, teaching online uh, became important, I was one of the first uh, nursing instructors nationally to be teaching online um, and have been teaching continuously online ever since. And one thing that I became aware of at that time was uh, that it's a good tool, but um, we need to understand what caring in digital settings looks like and how best to manifest that with our clients uh, right. as we work with them at a distance. And <clears throat> also with our students. <clears throat> so I started um, really studying that. <clears throat> what did it look like to care online and noticed that nobody was really doing any work in it. They were using this tool and thinking, well, uh, maybe you can't care in the digital realm or maybe it's not important or maybe we just need to focus on the tool and um, I was always kind of focused on, well, if we're going to use this thing, we better figure out how to convey and sustain caring because uh, we need to do that. Um, it's a whole different thing to convey and sustain caring in physical settings where you're face to face with a person. And I am still a firm believer that being in close proximity to another human being and being face to face and being able to actually physically touch them is the best way right each it's the best way to provide care it's i think it's the best way um but i'm also a realist and i know that 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 is uh, often not possible uh right. and we're seeing that now during the covid19 pandemic and 
uh, all the disruption that will cause not only from a public health perspective, but from uh, an economic perspective and uh, you know, long-term effects of people being concerned about uh, gathering together um, in close spaces. And uh, I've, I've been anticipating uh, this for many years. I'm also a you know, community and public health nurse and have been studying pandemics and the rise and fall of pandemics over the last several hundred years. Mm -hmm. So um, I really wanted to create a foundation uh, that people could work from to say, well, here we are in a digital setting what are we going to do to support caring and build caring communities and um, reach out to people across the world and form global caring communities that are meaningful and provide a degree of uh, connection that just general everyday use of, of technology really doesn't focus on right now. And so um, now, um, you know, with 12 research studies on this topic under my belt and published and a lot of data and talking to hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands, well, actually thousands of people about caring in digital right. settings, um, I kind of have a good idea of what that means and what it looks like. So I've right. created trainings and written books with Jean Watson and, and done some things to help people gain a better understanding for what we all need to be doing. And what's fascinating about all of that is that uh, there are a lot of tools you can use. Uh, mm -hmm. There's, you know, social networking, there's email, there's um, Twitter and Instagram and just Gosh, and then if you teach online, there's a lot of bells and whistles, you know, oh, let's use this, let's, let's use meme right. generators and YouTube. And so there's a lot of things you can do. Right. And sometimes people get lost in the things that you can do. And really what I've discovered through interviewing, you know, thousands of people and hearing what people have to say is that it all comes down to um, authentic presence, um, not social presence. That's a different animal. It's an important animal, but it's a different animal. I'm talking about each individual in a digital setting, whether it's texting somebody or calling somebody or um, emailing or texting yeah. or synchronous or asynchronous or whatever you're doing. The key thing is that you are cultivating um, authentic presence coming from, of course, that, that deep um, intentional commitment to caring. Um, and if you do that, then you quickly find that all the bells and whistles and all the tools are fun for some people to use, but mm -hmm. they're not critical. They're not the thing. The thing is, it comes down to a very simple approach of even if you're not synchronously communicating with somebody right. like we are right now, right? Um, it, you still have to cultivate presence with everything that you communicate in digital settings. Even if you uh, put up a website, which I've done, right. um, or teach asynchronous massive open online courses, which I've done since 2015 very successfully and still do now. I just finished one, Watson's Caring in the Digital World. And uh, I hold a space for that in my caring practice, and I hold full presence for all of those uh, artifacts that I have out there for that people see. I see from the um, traffic to my website and my blog and you know all those things. I see that people are accessing those, and um, so it's important to hold that that space for being that present. Present to all the things that you're putting out there and before you put them out there to be conscious of the fact that everything you put out there continues to ripple through space and time and affect people, which is kind of interesting to think about because, you know, the old saying, whatever you put on the internet, it's forever. Well, we need to consider that in terms of caring too. 
if we're going to be putting things up out on the internet, if we're going to be texting and emailing and you know, any number of social networking and all the other stuff, we need to carefully consider what we're putting out there because it stays out there. Right. And so um, I've been working to try and help um, our global caring community understand the gravity of what they do. Even one text, even, you know, right. one email, even one reply. Uh, the gravity of that and how it stays and and creates ripples in the universe and so um, my vision is that nurses will uh, be educated about the effects that not only their physical presence has but also their digital presence and um, you know I think nurses are uh, pretty much most nurses, you can get them to feel like uh, what they do in their physical environment, their physical presence, and when they walk into a room or walk into proximity with another person, that their presence is important. What's been more challenging is to get nurses and nursing um, teachers to fully understand that there's that same degree of importance and gravity when you enter into digital realms. How did the digital realms relate to Jean's theory about non-local consciousness? Do you relate, do you relate part of your di the digital world to being able to, to communicate the presence within this quantum universe? Absolutely. Um, that forms the foundations for the work I've been doing to try and understand the impact of the footprints we're leaving all over the digital realm. Right. Um, and uh, absolutely, it's, it's completely uh, wrapped up in Jean's theory and uh, all of her uh, work regarding um, non-local. So it's... Um, what I'm trying to do is, is help people understand that her work was very, is very visionary. And um, she talked about non-local presence before the internet. Right. As you recall. And right. um, it fits the internet perfectly. And that was one of the things that prompted me then to start moving forward with understanding this new thing that I knew was going to be very impactful in right. our world and in our practice, whatever practice we're in, nursing, non-nursing, right. whatever, whatever we're trying to do in the world, it's, it's very impactful. And so um, everything I've done now through the many years of my research and, and all of that has been to, tr to better understand what helps people feel cared for uh, when they are receiving um, or perusing any kind of digital interaction? So Asian tell me more about community. that. What does someone, how, how, based on your experience of teaching and teaching this work online, how is, how do you, can you speak to the power of caring when someone is work it, living in a digital world or interacting with someone in this digital world and being authentic and being present, how do you create that kind of connection in a more concrete way? What are some specific things you do with your body or do with your presence? Tell me more about that. Well, uh, first you center yourself and you come into presence, whether it's for a text or a phone call, or even if it's something that you consider to be very minor, right? You consider uh, what you might be doing or, or adding to the universe uh, during your interaction. Right. And breathe and um, take your time. Uh, type out, uh, like if you, let's use a text, for example. Let's say you want to type out a text. Um, I think we've all been on the receiving end of texts where you're very aware that the person on the sending end was not totally present mm -hmm. when you sent it. Right. And you can feel it, can't you? You can yeah. kind of get that feeling. Yeah. And so um, I guide people to uh, 
um, center yourself and be fully present to the task at hand. Take a deep breath, type out what you're going to do, read it, read it again, um, press send, and then also whatever you send out should be with a conscious intention to facilitate or to support caring or to convey something in a uh, productive caring manner especially right. when you receive something that's uh troubling to right. you from somebody or you read something uh that's troubling maybe in in a social networking or right. or something um type it and let it sit for a minute like for an hour or something if you've done mm -hmm. a response just it's you know it's very simple really you just Basically, the most important thing a person can do is to realize the impact they're having and then to employ basic um, caritas processes yes. in crafting how they interact with people in the world. And um, I'll give an example. I text, you know, we have a family text in my family with my kids and my husband and apparently my children also have a text just among them to discuss their parents. I just heard about that. Made me laugh. Mm. <laughs> um, but I will text things and we have kind of a lively exchange every day, all day. Right. And I will fat finger things on my phone. I still right. have trouble. You know, my fingers, since I've gotten yeah. older, don't work as well as I'd like. And then sometimes my spell check gets me. I mean, <laughs> I do something stupid, you know, that looks bad. And so I'll get it all typed up perfectly. Right. Like what I think. And I'll hit send. And then I'll review back when the kids are responding. And I'll go, oh, no, spell check changed what I was writing. It looks terrible. What am I going to do? And I get really upset. So then I sit down. I center myself. I take a deep breath. Right. And I go in and say, spell check got me again. This is what I really meant. I think <laughs> it's a hoot. But, I mean, it's just... You know, it's just one of those things of being attentive to what you put out there. I mean, it was a mistake that I made and it, you know, but on the other end, I am very sensitive to the fact that the people reading it might have thought I was being careless. Right. So then I'll go back in and say, I wasn't being, you know, really, I care about what I'm doing here. It's just that I'm not too good with spell check and that's what right. we're on. <laughs> and so it's just a matter of being real. Right. You, know, you don't even need to be you know, uh, especially elegant about the whole thing. You just have to be real and present and careful and cognizant of the things that you create and put forth and then take responsibility for um, creating the kind of environment uh, that you want, you know, because basically we are the environment and that is true for digital world. Consider yourself a digital bubble and wherever you send things, a little bubble of you goes with it as an environment there, you know? Yes. And so um, whatever you got going on in that bubble, when you send it, is going to go to the person who receives the communication. That's so true. One of the things I love, um, I would love for you to speak about because um, when Jean and I were putting, thinking about the name of this telesummit, conscious visionary nurses. Can you talk to, because you've done a tremendous amount of work with mindfulness and consciousness and being aware, can you speak to what that means, what, what it means to be conscious as we move into the future and what are those practices of awareness? Um, hmm. Well, um, being present in the current moment in the here and now. And um, I think technology, I think that's probably the biggest thing really in terms right. of moving into the future and technology is people tend to multitask and use technology more as a quick and dirty tool. Right. And if you do that all the time, you end up with, you know, quick and dirty communications all over the universe, which is probably not that productive. And so I'm talking about being, um, taking it moment by moment and not right. being 
pulled in 10 different directions to what right. you're going to do in the next 15 minutes and what you did the last 15 minutes. And right. I'm asking people to be fully situated in the current moment and just pause. I mean, it just takes one pause, one breath, one thought um, that what you're doing is impactful and I'm going to be here right now with this and sit with this and, and uh, move moment by moment into the future with that realization about, that's mindfulness basically, with uh -huh. that realization that what you do moment to moment matters and um, nothing is disposable. Um, doing something in the moment with a digital communication while you're on your way to the more important things that you think are ahead of you um, misses, you miss your life that way. It's all gone. You never are there. You're always striving to be someplace different. And it's really important as we move forward into the future that real, to realize all those micro things that we do, all those micro activities that we are all engaged in now in terms of digital usage. Right. That's what those all are. They're micro activities. Check the news. Oh, look at that recipe. Oh, my kid just texted me. Oh, look, I've got an email from work. You know, those are all micro activities. Right. And if we let those flow by and assume that our responses to those are inconsequential and that the real stuff is when we're with people face to face um, in the same room right. and we miss a good portion of our lives and so i'm just asking that whatever your those micro things that you're doing in the moment just right. be there for each moment moment to moment that's the flow of everybody's lives whether they want to acknowledge that or not is we are going from moment to moment to moment to moment to moment and if we disregard all these moments while we're frantically trying to get to this moment we miss that and then when we get to this moment that we've been trying really hard to get to we're probably going to miss that too because we're headed for something else you know yeah. and so it's you just, you wake up one day and go, what have I ever really been here doing? Totally been there. You know, what, where did it all go? I, I don't know. And nothing becomes, nothing is, is consequential anymore. I mean, that's kind of where we're at. And I see that in my students is nothing's consequential because it's all just moment to moment, minutia, minutia, moment to moment, respond, 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 respond. It's, it's a challenge to get people to step back and go, there's a preciousness here. And um, this is the only thing, any human being, you can have all the material things you want. You can have all the money and accolades and friends you want, but those don't belong to you. The only thing that any of us has in this world is our moments. And if we give those up, if we just toss them away as we race from one future moment to the next future moment while disregarding what's right in front of you, um, that's how you end up with carelessness and non uncaring and um, kind of a misunderstanding for what's important in the world in the moment that you're in. And so, um, that's what I see is it's, it's really not an exotic or complicated thing. It's just please um, acknowledge the importance and the preciousness of your moments. That's beautiful. I think that's, you know, to me, that's such a words of wisdom of how we can live our lives. And especially with the changes that are happening in the world and we're starting to have all this information in a digital way? How do we experience ourselves in relationship to all the information in a different way? And it's really beautiful to hear you say, what we really need to do is be in the moment, be aware of the ripple that we're having in the world and everything that we put out there is part of ourselves and is making a contribution to the whole. Well, and the other thing that I try to help people understand is you are what you consume. 
and no. um, we consume a lot of digital things. Right. And we have to make choices about what we are consuming because you are what you eat. And that includes um, TV, it includes uh, um, Google searches, it includes texting, it includes social media, it includes food, it includes relationships. You are what you consume. And so um, there's a lot of indiscriminate consuming going on in terms of the internet, which then generates the creation of indiscriminate and um, unhelpful and non-productive content that swirls around on the internet and influences how we interact with the world around us. Right. And in order to get uh, a hold of that and try to, again, make our lives a little bit more purpose-filled, love-filled, compassion-filled endeavors, right. uh, becomes imperative that we start making um, careful choices about what we are consuming because everything that you see in the digital world right. is not worthy of consuming. That's for sure. Well, I'd like to, if you take the, um, the last part of our time, could you share about the gift that you have and the course that, you're, that, you're, that you have available free online? Okay. Um, I actually have several free things. Um, if you go to my website, which I think you'll provide a link to, it's caringsciencemindfulpractice.com. Um, there are two free and open, massive open online courses. One is called Caring Science Mindful Practice. That's been in existence since 2015. And there's been about 5,000 people that have um, signed up for that course. And uh, that has created kind of an enduring global community that you can certainly join and connect with people all over the world. It's provided accessibility for people from anywhere in the world that has access to the internet. Um, I have a second free and open uh, course that just started about um, four or five months ago. And it's called Watson's Caring in the Digital World. And that's a course, a reflective course, that is based on what I've talked about today. Okay. And then I have three free trainings that are 90 minutes long. The courses are each uh, four weeks long. Okay. And you get a certificate of completion at the end. And you can apply for uh, uh, continuing education units through Watson Caring Science Institute. I don't handle that or get any income from it, but it all goes to Watson Caring Science Institute. Okay. The trainings are uh, 90 minutes long, and one of them um, is a Caring Science Mindful Practice intensive training for 90 minutes. Another one is Conveying and Sustaining Caring in Online Classrooms. Wow, okay. And um, the third one is Mindful Communication for Caring Online. So it, it combines Thich Nhat Hanh's mindfulness and Watson's theory of human caring and all the research I've done around both of those areas into some very practical examples for how you can mindfully communicate in the online setting. That's and those are free, and you get a certificate of completion for that, but there's no CEUs for that. That's fantastic. Well, I want to say thank you for such a wonderful gift that you've given nursing. It's pretty amazing. You really have made a huge difference in taking this visionary, this world in the digital world of where we're going and taking it. You're like a, a forerunner in what's possible. And what I want to thank you for making it as, you know, the value of caring. How can we be present with each other in this digital world in a way that we really connect even if we're not face to face, how can we do that in these new ways in which we're going to be communicating? Yeah, we've been doing it for the last month. <laughs> I know uh, it. <laughs> you know, we need need a little, people. I think need a, a little bit of guidance. You know, for how that's all going to work and if it works. And I'm here to tell you, it works. People feel connected and loved and nurtured and um, uh, part of a community. Uh, in digital settings that you do these types of things in. And so um, it does work. People do feel cared about. It's not the same as face-to-face, -face, 
but um, it's, it's good. It is. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah, I'm just going to end with our little taking a deep breath and wishing everybody a loving, happy, caring. Thank you. Bye, Kathleen. Bye. Bye.